Right, so uh, it's acid time. Um, gives me a uh, titration graph here. And um, it tells me that one mole of glycolic acid reacts with one mole of sodium hydroxide. Write an equation. Glycolic acid they've got here. Obviously that's an alcohol, that's the acid, so that's the bit that's going to react. So we've got HO, which is your alcohol, that ain't going to react with sodium hydroxide, plus NaOH, that H is going to go like so, and I'm also going to make water. They would now like me to determine the concentration of sodium hydroxide. So let's just whip this back a little bit. So I know I have got 25 centimeters cubed of that concentration of glycolic acid in the conical flask, and I added sodium hydroxide from the burette. So let's all well, let's work out the moles of glycolic acid which is going to equal concentration times volume over a thousand and that comes to 3.125 times 10 to the minus 3. If you have a look, that there is 22 centimetres cubed. So, that, because it's a one-to-one, -one, that number of moles, so we can say that's now the moles of NaOH is going to be the same, but that must have been in 22 centimetres cubed, and therefore your concentration is 3.125 times 10 to the minus 3 divided by 22 times by 1,000, and that gives me 0.142 moles per decimeter cubed, like so. So, um, it carries on to say, students decide to carry out this titration using acid base indicator. Why is it, what important factor do we need to consider? The vertical section must match the pH range of the indicator. So if we whiz back to that, the pH range of the indicator must of this, so that pH range of the indicator must match the vertical section of the graph. Um, right, we've got some more calculations now, so let's whiz through those. What is the expression of Ka for glycolic acid? Ka is going to be concentration of H plus HOCH2COO minus over the concentration of the acid, like so. Calculate Ka for glycolic Okay, we now need to calculate Ka for glycolic acid. It's given me some information up here. It's told me the pH. Because it's told me pH, I can calculate this boy there. 10 to the minus pH. So 10 to the minus 2.37. That comes to 4.27 times 10 to the minus 3. Right, um, I know that. They told me it up there. I can say Ka is the concentration of H plus squared, because we say those two are the same from the um, equilibrium, over the concentration of the acid. So that will become 4.27 times 10 to the minus 3 squared over 0.125. If you bung that in your calculator, uh, I would get 1.46 times 10 to the minus 4 and units for Ka per moles per decimeter cubed. Okay, so we now need to calculate the molar dissociation of glycolic acids. This is quite an interesting one. How much of it has dissociated? Well, we've just worked out at the top, that my concentration of H plus is 4.27 times 10 to the minus 3. So that's the amount, the number of molecules that have dissociated. 
So it's going to be 4.7 divided times 10 to the divided by the original concentration, which is 0.125 times 100. And if you do that, you get 3.4%. Okay, it's our old favourite buffers now. Um, I explain how a solution containing glycolic acid and glycolic acetylenes can act as a buffer and how I can prepare it for my ammonia. So the first of all, always write up your dissociation of the acid because that is your key equilibrium that you have to talk about. Right, so I've got that. If I add OH minus ions, they will react with the H plus here to produce water and therefore the equilibrium shifts to the right hand side to replace the H plus ions. If I add now H plus ions, they will react to give me glycoic acid, like so, and therefore the equilibrium shifts to uh, the left hand side to remove H plus ions I've added. Uh, this next point, how can I prepare for ammonia and glycoic acid? Well, I would need to add ammonia to excess glycoic acid. Um, that means, so this reaction would happen, HO, CH2 plus ammonia would give me HO, CH2, COO minus NH4 plus, like so. So that's given me my salt there, and I've still got some glycolic acid which remains because I've got excess of that. So some glycolic acid will remain as in excess. So therefore I've got that boy, that boy because I added excess, and therefore I've got a buffer. Right, a lot of information on this page, uh, which can take some um, thinking through, um, particularly the, this next bit here. But let's just do this bit, this is relatively easy. Um, I've got to label my um, conjugate acid base pairs. So, if that is acid one, that one's going to be base one because they differ by H plus, and therefore that is going to be acid two, and that's going to be base two because he's accepted a proton to become um, that boy there. Right, so this next bit is quite interesting. So I'm going to do stage one. So in this process, so I can represent um, protein inhalers R, S, S, R. And in stage one, I am adding um, H, S, C, H, 2, C, O, O, minus. And it tells me it breaks this bond here, R, S, H. So that H is going to be there and will break that bond. That means that that S hasn't got a bond, but they can bond together. So I could end up with bonded with another one, like so. So they join up, so that H breaks that bond and then two of these break up. So I'm gonna have to have two, um, two of those, aren't I? And I'm gonna form two of those like so. For the next one then, I'm going to take this 2RSH and I'm adding to it hydrogen peroxide solution um, and it reforms the disulfide links in the hair. 
So we go back to this original thing. Um, and what am I left over with? Or oh, left over with some water. Um, and I think I probably need two waters to be made as well.